welcome to another Laravel tutorial. Now that we have our database and we run our migration to activate the pages table, it's time to add some content in it. And luckily Laravel offers a pretty easy interface to seed our database in a dynamic way. So if we access our code editor, if we scroll in the same database folder that we were using for our migration, you will notice that we have a seeds folder. Inside here we have a database seeder.php that it's currently empty. But whenever we run a seeder in Laravel, we have the ability to call a unique class or write whatever we want inside this run method to tap our database and basically store all the data that we want coming manually written from this file, coming from a CSV, from an SQL dump or importing dynamically from somewhere else. So let's take a look on how to do it. First, let's open our terminal and let's generate a new seeder with artisan as usual. So let's type PHP artisan make column seeder and then the name of the seeder. In my case, it's gonna be pages table seeder. And this is a convention that we should always respect. Use the name of the seeder with the same name of the table. So in my case, it's pages and then pages table and then the seeder and it's all Pascal case. And let's hit enter. The seeder was successfully created and of course we have it here in the same folder. And as usual, because we generated with artisan, our code is ready to be used. So inside the run here, we can start uh, tapping the database and insert some data inside the pages table. In order to do that, we need to use a facade method that Laravel offers called DB. This facade method is not available by default inside the seeder, so we need to tap it by using that specific method. And that method is inside use illuminate backward slash support backward slash facades backward slash DB and semicolon. Now that we're importing this facade method DB, that stands for database, of course, we can use it. So this DB, we can say that inside this DB facade that it's actually a class, let's use a method called table. And inside the table, we need to specify it as a string, the name of our table, in our case is pages. And then we can use with a method chaining, a method called insert. And inside the insert, we can specify an array of parameters that match uh, whatever fillable column we have in the pages table. So here we can specify the title. It's gonna be equal to, let's say about, and then we have the content. I don't remember, do we have something in the content? Let's, this is our database, the structure. Yes, title and content, perfect. The content is going to be this is the about about page. Now we can duplicate this and say what kind of pages do we have here? Don't remember. So we have the blog about and contact. Okay, so let's say this is the blog. This is the blog page. And then we can paste another time and this is the contact page. Perfect. Now we have our seeder here in the pages table seeder, of course, is not hooked to Laravel in any way. But if we access the database seeder here, you will notice that in the default one, we have a comment out call that it's calling a table seeder that we currently don't have. This is like a placeholder to let us know how to trigger one or multiple seeder. So in our case, we're triggering just one seeder. So let's use the pages table seeder and let's trigger the class. So this run will call the class of our pages table seeder. Perfect. In the future, if we'll have more than one seeder, we can wrap this around an array and then specify multiple seeders separated by a comma. But because we're running just one, it's fine to just pass one single class. Now it's time to run the seeder, but before doing it, we need to access our terminal and dump the composer auto load. So let's run composer dump dash auto load. So we're forcing composer to dump all the auto loading files and re-indexing basically our project after we generate a seeder. And unfortunately we have to do it every time we generate a new seeder, but luckily we won't have to generate many seeders. This is just an example. So now we can run our seed. So let's say php artisan db column seed. Perfect. 
the pages tables header was seeded successfully. So if we open our database, once again, we go into content, we refresh this page. Oops, we got just the first one. Sorry, I did a mistake inside the seeder. So because we have multiple rows that were populating at once, we need to actually wrap that rows or like the full list of arrays inside another array. So let's open once again the, let's say, parent array and then save it. Okay, let's delete these data. Okay, pages. Perfect, the pages table is empty. So let's run the seeder once again. Okay, we go back in our content, we refresh, and now we have all our content here. Of course, the created ad and updated ad is not there because we didn't populate that data. And this is going to happen automatically when we st once we start using the actual model and the resources, something that we're gonna see later for now is not important for the sake of this tutorial. Before concluding this tutorial though, I wanna change a couple of things. First, I wanna add a slug column in my pages table because my URL is dynamically changing based on the slugs. In order to have a consistent check in the database to pull the data, I want to have a unique value that I can pass to the database and the unique value is going to be the slug. So we need to change a couple of things in my database migration in the seeder. So first let's access the database migration. And the thing that I'm doing right now is not really correct. Like if you need to alter a migration, you should create a new migration. But because we are at the beginning of our project and we don't really have any sensitive data in it, we're pretty safe to do a complete refresh of our migration start from scratch. So now let's duplicate this and let's generate the slug. Then it's gonna be just a string. And inside my seeder, I wanna duplicate also this line and say this is the slug and the slug is basically about lowercase and I can change the title to about page and then duplicate also these two, these two and say slug and this is blog and this is contact and also here and here we can blog and contact page. Perfect. So now that we did this edit, we altered the migration, we altered the seeder. Instead of doing what we did before, that it rolling back the migration with PHP artisan roll back, we can do a complete refresh of all our migration plus seeding at the same time, same with artisan. So we can say to artisan, hey, migrate, but instead of just migrating and rolling back the migration, just migrate and do a refresh of everything. So roll back and reinstall the migration altogether. And while you do that, also seed whatever seeder we have in our seeds folder. So let's take a look. Perfect. All our database tables were rolled back. All our database table were migrated once again, and then our pages table was seeded once again. So if we access back our database and we refresh the content, now we have the slug, the new column in the pages table with the title and the slug matching our navigation in our website. This is perfect. And if we refresh also here, we have the new slug column in our pages. Fantastic. So you can see how the migrations and seeds can be really handy, especially when you're bootstrapping your project for the first time. Imagine you're working with other developers, just another one or two or three different developers, and you all want to start a project from the same sets of data, from the same consistent set of data. You can do it by creating a bunch of migration and seeders and allowed every new developer coming on board of your project to start from the same point. Well, that's pretty much it for this tutorial. In the next one, we're gonna see how to generate our first model and dynamically tap the data that we just store in our database. Thank you so much guys for watching and until the next one, as usual, happy coding.